Hi, this is Mr. Chu and you are welcome to my study room. If today is your first time coming here, then I will strongly encourage you to subscribe to this channel for more videos. Today we are solving quadratic equations using the factorization method. That is the study for today. Let's go straight into the lesson. Before the actual lesson, let's take some few facts about uh, quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are constants, and a, equal, a is not equal to 0. A is not equal to 0 because these are equations of the form x squared. Like you must have an x squared term or the highest degree must be x squared. So you see that when a is equal to 0, the whole of the first term will be equal to 0. Then it is no more a quadratic equation. It becomes a linear equation. That is why the a must not be equal to 0. Good. An example will be 3 x squared. So an example will be 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. Another thing I want to add is that quadratic equations can be written in any form. For example, we can have the 3x squared being equal to 8x minus 5. Or other terms can be at the right hand side. That is just what I want to mean. Or it can be written in any way. But the way it is now is the standard form because of what I have here. It's supposed to be x squared term first, followed by x term, and then followed by a constant term, if there is any, for both the second term and the third term, then equal to zero. That is the standard form of writing quadratic equations. Then another fact I need to say about quadratic equations is that for any quadratic equation at all, the answers are called solutions or roots. The answers are solutions. So they can ask you to find the solutions or find the roots of a, part a particular quadratic equation. They are just asking you to find the value of x. And then another fact we need to know is that in general, a quadratic equation has two solutions or two roots which may be equal or not so that means that when you make x the subject of a quadratic equation or the variable it can be x it can be y it can be any variable the subject of a quadratic equation is you have two answers i mean the same answer repeated or different answers that means that's why we say they can be equal or not there are a number of methods in solving quadratic equations, but I will just mention a few. And among them will be the factorization method, completing of squares method, using the quadratic formula, which most of you call the almighty formula, then using the graphical method, which involves the use of graph. We will talk about that in another lesson when we are drawing graph of quadratic functions. Then, in cases of objective questions, you can also use your calculator to solve and get the root straightforward and choose your answers. So, these are a few of the methods you can use factorization method, completing of squares, using the quadratic formula, graphical method, and then the calculator where you want only the roots right and like i said earlier today's lesson is mainly solving quadratic equations using the factorization method before we go on to solve the first example these are a few steps i would like us to note to help out to help the solution to to help make the solution easier so there are three main steps I would like to talk about. And the first one is 
write the equation in the standard form and i spoke about the standard form already if however the equation is written you make sure you arrange it to be to have the x squared term first followed by the x term then followed by the constant term and then equal to zero so that's the first step you write it in a standard form if it is not already so then the second step is factorize the expression on the left hand side of the equation that one we'll, we'll, we'll do details of that as we work with examples so you have to factorize the left hand side of the equation then the third point is you use the fact that if a and b are real numbers then a times b is equal to zero means either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero and i will explain all those with examples so don't worry now let's go to the very first example using just this example i have here good to solve 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 equal to 0 using the factorization method with the step 1 where we have to arrange it has already be arranged for us so step 1 is okay then we go to the step 2 which is for us to factorize so to factorize we can see comparing this with the general equation which i wrote from the beginning we will see that We we'll see that our a our a is the coefficient of the x squared so that is 3 our b is the coefficient of x and remember that in algebraic expression we write a number with the sign before it so the coefficient of x is negative 8 and our c is 5 the constant them. right in factorizing the left hand side you first find the product of a and c so that is a c should give us three times five because our a is three and our c is five and that will give us 15 we are looking for two factors of this 15 so that when we add we will get negative 8 the two factors already means that when we multiply them we should get 15 and when we add it should give us negative 8 one of the factors can be negative or both of them being negative depending on what the b and our ac are right so in this case our ac is positive 15 and our b is negative 8 just to simplify things one of the factors cannot be negative because there is no way you can multiply two numbers where one of them is negative and then you are going to get a positive answer unless of course you you multiply the negative number and zero and then you get zero but if not then for any non-zero any two non-zero numbers there's no way if one is negative you multiply get a positive so in this case it's either both of them are positive or both of them are negative these are the only two options left for us now and in this case both of them cannot be positive because if both of them are positive when we multiply we we'll get positive 15 but when we add we cannot get negative 8 it means that the only option left is that both of them will be negative so that when we multiply negative times negative will give us positive 15 negative plus negative will still give us negative 8 so we are finding the factors of 15 in pair and they are 1 and 15 then 3 and 5 and that's all or we can turn it the other way around but here we are only looking for <laughs> the two so in this case we have already known that both of them should be negative negative 1 and times uh, plus negative 15 will not give us negative 8 so it means that negative 1 and negative 15 are not the factors you should choose or let me even make the two of them negative already because i said both of them must be negative 
negative 3 times negative 5 will give us negative 15. Negative 3 plus negative 5 will give us negative 8, which is our B. So we are going to use this negative 5, negative 3 and negative 5 to replace this 8 here, the B, negative 8 here. Because when we add them, we'll get negative 8. So we haven't changed the question. Only that we were able to make it 4 terms instead of 3 terms. So that's what we'll be doing. This question here now becomes... 3x squared minus 3x for the negative 3 minus 5x for the negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. Then now we group down 2, 2, leaving the sign in the middle. We don't group that sign. So 2, 2 this way. Now we are going to factorize each bracket. And looking at here, the common factors are 3 and x so we factor 3x out and here we will be have x left minus 1 then minus the common factor here is 5 then we will have x then here minus because of this negative the sign inside of must change so minus 1 and always when you finish this step, you must make sure whatever is in the first parenthesis is the same as the, what, is, what is in the second parenthesis. If not, your answers, it means that your factorization is wrong. So now we group the ones outside the parenthesis and that is going to give us 3x minus 5. We put it in a new parenthesis. Then we repeat one of the common ones, which is x minus 1 equals 0. So at this stage, we have finished the factorization, which is step 2. So we go to step 3, that assuming this is our A and this is our B. And AB, which is a product of A and B, equal to 0. Then... If these two a and b are real numbers then the only way the product of two numbers can give you zero is either the first one let me write my either either the first one is zero or the second one is zero this is the only way you can get a product of the two should give you zero that is the assumption we are going to take now so it means that either 3x minus 5 which is our a equals 0 or x minus 1 which is our b equal to 0 then we simplify each of them 3x we group like terms so we move this to the right becomes 5 and then we divide both sides by 3 our x will be equal to 5 over 3 then we come to this side as well x will be equal to 1 if we are to find the solution set then we will say that x is like that x equals 5 over 3 or you want to write it in a mixed fraction as a mixed fraction then 1 whole 2 over 3 or 1 this is a solution to our question but then if those who watch my previous videos on the indices and logarithm there is another method which is still the factorization so let's do that one too at the right hand side here alternatively we have 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 equals 0. Alright. So by having this, we, we put two parentheses here. Equals 0. We write x in both of them. 3 times 5 
is 15. We want two factors of 15. Then when we add, we will get negative 8. And like we did earlier, these factors are negative 3 and negative 5. So we will just write them here. So x minus 3 for the negative 3. Then x minus 5 for the negative 5. Yes. But only that in this case, our a is not 1. So since our a is not 1, we divide only the numbers by the a so this will give us over 3 and this will give us over 3 so we will have x minus 1 then times x minus 5 over 3 equal to 0 then we come back to this side for the product of two numbers to be zero is either the first one is zero or the second one is zero so we are going to have x minus one equal to zero or x minus five over three equals zero then that means our x when we move this to the right becomes one or our x becomes 5 over 3 so when we finish the true set is going to be x is such that x equals 1 or 5 over 3 which is the same as the second one same as the first method we use but a bit simpler and technical so you need to pay attention whichever you want to do you do that let's go to another example example 2 example 2 is asking us to find the true set of x squared equals 3 parenthesis 2 x plus 9 all right so here as we know already or as learned earlier It is not in written in the standard form and here too there is a parenthesis we, we need to open here so that we can arrange so we are going to do that one by one that means we are going to have x squared being equal to 6x 27 6x plus 27 then we now follow the step one which is for us to group them to the left hand side so that it will be in a standard form so that is going to give us x squared then this one moves here become negative 6x this one moves to the left it become negative 27 negative 27 equals zero because there's nothing left at the right hand side now all right so again our a is what the coefficient of x squared in, in algebra any time a variable is standing alone it means that its coefficient is one so a is one our b is negative six remember not to write only six because every number is taken with a sign before it and our c is negative 27 and not just 27 so the steps still continue step two we are on step two factorization still so ac which is a times c is going to give us negative 27 meaning 1 times negative 27 is negative 27 so now we are looking for two factors of this negative 27 so that when we add them we are going to get negative 6 from the explanation we gave for the first one it means that the negative 27 here is just a hint that one of the factors is negative because for you to multiply two numbers to get a negative number it means one of them is negative so we are going to find the factors of 27 
then we negate one of them to see which of them will give a negative 6 which is our b the factors of 27 are 1 and 27 3 and 9 yeah and then 9 and 3 but we cannot do 9 and 3 again so just 3 and 9 you are going to add the two numbers to get negative 6 for you to add two numbers one negative and one positive but you still get a negative number it means that the the bigger among the two numbers is negative that's why you have a negative result if you have a positive result it means that the bigger for the two of them is the positive one so in this case since the six is negative it means that the bigger for the two numbers should be negative so i can just go ahead and negate the 27 then i negate the nine so one plus negative 27 will give me negative 26 which is not the same as p then 3 plus negative 9 which is the same as 3 minus 9 anyway will give us negative 6 which is the same as the b it means i am going to replace the negative 6x here by 3x and then negative 9x so let's rewrite this one now to be four terms instead of three terms that means we are going to have x squared minus this one. i want to bring the positive one second it doesn't matter because the first one i brought the negative one so i want to bring the positive one second so minus 9x because it will be easier to work it that way too minus 9x plus 3x minus 27 equals 0 then we group them leaving the sign in the middle so remember again that negative 9x plus 3x will give us negative 6x so we haven't changed negative 27 is here and then the x squared is also here so we haven't changed anything so now we go ahead and factorize each of them here the common factor here is x so when we factor x out we are going to have x out x minus 9 plus the common factor here is 3 3 out then we have x minus 9 equals 0 so should you bring the 3 and the negative 9 out first you will still not have any problem the only thing is that now uh, when you get here, there will be negative here, so the sign inside here will change to be positive. You mean that here today is positive because of the three you brought first. That will be the only thing. But whichever you can choose any of them uh, at your discretion. So we bring we bring the outside ones together. We have x plus three, that is those outside. Then this and this are the same. We pick only one x minus nine because you then based on that assumption that if you are multiplying two numbers to get zero then it's either the first one is zero or the second one is zero so that means either x plus three equals zero or x minus nine equals zero that means x x will be equal to negative three when we move this one we can negative or x will be equal to positive 9 because when we move here become positive so the true set becomes x is such that x equals negative 3 or positive 9 again using method 2 which is easier but you need to be a little careful you have your equation x squared minus 6x minus 27 equal to 0 so our a is 1 our c is negative 27 so you want two factors of negative 27 
which one we add will get negative six okay first of all we bring our x here we bring our x here again equals zero so we have already found that that they are three and negative nine so we bring plus three for the positive three the minus nine for the negative nine so it's either x plus 3 equal to 0 or x minus 9 equal to 0. So x will be equal to negative 3 or x will be equal to positive 9. So our two set becomes x is such that x equals negative 3 or positive 9 so it's about which of them you want to choose and you should make sure you don't make mistake especially if the a is not one you should make sure you don't make a mistake let's take our next example great Example 3 is asking us to find a solution set of 3x squared equals 21x. Here, we try to group all of them to the left-hand side to give us 3x squared minus 21x equals 0. One thing we shouldn't forget here is that here our c is zero because there is no c so to speak so we have our first term the s squared term followed by the uh, the x term and then there is no constant term right when in situations like this you can still make your a your, your c zero and solve but the easiest way is for you to factorize and solve so when you have only two terms it is easier for you to factorize here let's factorize the left hand side and see the common factors here are three it's a common factor for three and 21 and x is in both of them so we factor three x out so when you factor three x out you are going to have x minus seven being equal to zero here we have finished the factorization so this becomes our a the 3x becomes our a and this becomes our b so we are still using that assumption that if a times b equal to zero where a and b are real numbers then it means that either a is zero or b is zero so that when we multiply two and they can get zero so it means that either three x Either 3x equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0. Yeah. So when we divide both sides by 3, this will give us x being equal to 0 divided by 3 is 0. Or we move this to the right, x becomes 7. So our solution is x is such that x equals 0 or 7. x is such that x equals 0 or 7. And let me quickly remind you not to make this mistake. Never, never do this when you are solving this never do this let me just write that just for emphasis never do this never do this never make it 3x squared equal to then you try to move this to the right hand side 21x then you divide both sides 
by 3x because you want to make x the subject 3x and this cancel this this cancels one of these this cancel this, this goes here 7 x equal to 7 never do that never do this never do this if I should give you any strong reason why you shouldn't do this, we have seven in the answers. But remember, we said at the beginning of this lesson that every quadratic equation must have two solutions. And you see, the way you've done it, the zero is gone. And you cannot conclude that way. It must have two solutions. So never do this. Never divide through to get your answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go on to the next example. Example 4 is find the roots of x squared minus 16 equals 0. This, this one is almost like the one we just saw example 3. We have our a. We don't have b. We don't have x term in it. Then we have the constant term which is our c. So here too it will be we can still put our zero x as our b and use the factorization but when you have only two terms the first and the last term and you are fortunate and uh, it is difference of two squares like this case this is difference of two squares because this is x squared minus 16 is also four squared so let me even just write that So this is the same as x squared minus 4 squared equals 0. So this is difference of 2 squared. And this one, please and please, it is the responsibility of you, the student. When you see this, you should know that this is a perfect square or it's not. It is not the duty of the examiner or the teacher. You are the student. You need to know your times table well so that when you see the number, you know whether that number is a square perfect score or not if not it means that you're, you have to write or oh, your teacher i don't even know how i'm going to say it because the question will not give you a hint that it's a perfect square you have to when you see the number you know that that number is a number squared so let's move on if that happens then with difference of two squares we know how we do it already in algebraic expression we pick the first one plus the second one then the first one minus the second one so this will give us x plus 4 as the first a parenthesis then x minus 4 this is how we factorize a difference of 2 squared equals 0 so based on the same assumption is either this is 0 or this is 0 that is either x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0 so this one comes to the right we can x equals negative 4 or x equal positive 4 so our two set to be x is side that x equals negative 4 or four. In this case, we can also solve it this way, which I will not really encourage because if it is not negative, if it's not difference of two squared, it might become a little difficult. But then you can also solve it this way alternatively. So you have x squared minus 16 equals 0. You move the 16 to the right, you get x squared equals 16. Then after getting x squared equals 16, you take the square root of both sides. So you get square root of x squared b equal to it should be positive or negative square root of 16 which some people might forget that is why i said i'm not too interested in this step 
it should be positive or negative because for the square root of any number it means that if you square the answer you get if you square a negative of that you get the answer in the root so for example here our answer is going to be so this one goes with this our x is going to give us plus or minus 4 which is the same as 4 or negative 4 so this means that when we square because when you take the square root of a number to get an answer when you square your answer you should get the number in the square root again so that means that when we square 4 we are going to get 16 when we square negative 4 2 we are going to get 16 that is why it's positive or negative and again to emphasize that it is positive or negative because for every quadratic equation we must have two solutions so if you bring only the positive one that is just one of its one of the solution you have been given so you have to give all the two so that is our answer then let's take our very final example for this study our example five which is likely to be the final example for today's study is asking us to solve for the roots of 13x squared minus 2x minus 5 equals 8x squared minus 2. The new addition here is that we have expressions both at the left and the right hand sides of the equal, equal to sign. And we need to group like terms and simplify before we even come to the factorization. So let's do that quickly. I mean that this is going to give us 13x squared minus 8x squared because I'm grouping like terms already and this one is positive when it comes to the left, it comes minus. Then minus 2x minus 5 plus 2 because when the 2, 2 comes to the left, it becomes positive then equal to 0 because there's nothing left at the right hand side again. Then now we simplify like terms. So 13x squared and negative 8x squared are like terms. So we can simplify. 13x squared minus 8x squared is going to give us 5x squared. Then this only one term. So we repeat it minus 2x. Negative 5 plus 2 will give us negative 3 equals 0. Then we are now back to we now have our quadratic equation so we can go ahead with our factorization now and our ac if we can cut the step short our x is 5 times negative 3 will give us negative 15 mm -hmm. then we are looking for two factors of negative 15 now we add we are going to get negative 2 so let's see we have 1 and 15 factors of 15 we have 1 and 15 then we have 3 and 5 yeah so again looking at what we have here to simplify it in a negative 15 means that one of the two factors must be negative and the fact that when we add them our result should be negative 2 which is our b means that the bigger one should be negative so let me just make this negative because this is the bigger one they make this one to negative because this is the bigger one. So when we multiply each of them, we'll get negative 15. So let's just go ahead with the addition. 1 plus negative 5 will give us negative 4, which is not our B. Then 3 plus negative 5 will give us negative 2, which is our B. So we are going to choose this because this satisfies our condition we are looking for. So we are going to use these ones to replace the negative 2 this the equation is now going to be 5x squared plus 3x minus 5x then minus 3 so remember positive 3x minus 5x is replacing the negative 2x because when we add them we are going to get negative 2x so we haven't changed anything the 5x squared is still here and the negative 3 is still here right equals zero let's group them 
the first one I brought and the, the positive one first, uh, the negative one first. So this one decided to maintain the positive one first so that we experience both of them. So here, common factors here are X or is X. So we're going to have X out to give us 5X plus 3, then minus, there's no common factor here to so to speak. So when there's no common factor between them, you factor one out. So we have one out to have five X minus, no, it becomes positive because of the negative outside the bracket. So the sign inside have to change when you factorize. So plus three equals zero. We factor the outside ones out. We are going to get X minus one then 5x plus 3 equals 0. The assumption is already there. So it's either x minus 1 equals 0 or 5x plus 3 equals 0. If that is the case, then now it means that our x will be equal to 1 or our 5x will be equal to this country. We can negative 3. We divide both sides by 5. Our x is going to be negative 3 over 5. So, for us to conclude, then we we'll say that a true set is such that is x is such that x equals 1 or negative 3 over 5. Then maybe using the second method, which is shorter, we have our quadratic equation here, 5x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. We bring our parentheses equals zero. We put our x inside. So a a times c a is five c is negative three. So a times c is negative fifteen, and we are looking for two factors. We've done that here already. So the factors will be three positive three. And negative 5 but remember in this case our a is not 1 so since our a is not 1 we divide both sides by the a so for this formula this is the devil inside you have to remember that the a is not 1 so you have to fix that you have to work on that if the a is not one if you're using this method that's why you have to pay attention because if you get your final answer to be x plus three then x minus five it will be wrong that is not what you get so it means that x plus three over five is equal to zero or x minus one equals zero because five divided by five is one then x be equal to negative 3 over 5 or x equals 1 which is the same as what we got here 1 and negative 3 over 5 all right so this is how you solve quadratic equation using a factorization method after this you are going to have some questions as usual you are going to solve them on your own using the factorization method and you can feel free to share your result with me in the comment box. Good. This has been the lesson for the day. Solving quadratic equations using the factorization method. I hope today's lesson has been helpful to you. Thank you for making time with me in my study room. 
please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet for more videos and i hope to see you in the next study thank you for watching and see you again bye bye